Perhaps UNESCO would not be where it is today if it had not been for Irina Bokova, the former Director General of the International Organization committed to world peace and development. As the first woman leader that led the organization for eight consecutive years, she has spearheaded advancements in all areas, including women's education, diversity, and cultural conservation. Now, she's starting her second career in Korea as an educator. We hear her story in depth on Heart to Heart. Joining us today is Ms. Irina Bokova, who is the former Director General of UNESCO, who has contributed to the development of education, culture, and science around the world. She is presently the Miwon Scholar of Practice at Kyunghee University and the Honorary Rector of its Humanitas College, which is a liberal arts college that is part of the Kyunghee University. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. Hello, Jennifer, and hello to all the viewers of this program. I'm very happy to be here for different reasons. First, uh, uh, because uh, I'm uh, taking a responsible, I would say, position honorary at the Kyunghee University, the University of Peace. And the second reason is that I'm in the Arirang television. Mm. I would like immediately to say that Arirang, I know Arirang because it's an intangible heritage of UNESCO, the Korean traditional folk reading song. And I remember when we inscribed it on the world list of intangible heritage. Oh. So, Arirang, the name belongs to the Korean people, to you, but also to the world through UNESCO. Oh, thank you so much for that introduction. Mm -hmm. uh, so, as I mentioned earlier, um, you are, of course, the former Director General of UNESCO. So, I guess it would be more accurate to address you as Professor Irina Bokova than, of course, uh, Director General Irina Bokova now. Uh, you are the B1 Scholar of Practice at Kyunghee University, as you've mentioned, and the Honorary Rector of its Humanitas College. Now, you were also awarded an honorary doctorate degree in peace studies. This was just uh, this past February. So I'd like to ask you uh, how it feels to be here in Korea. Well, I, I have to say that I'm, uh, of course, very honored um, uh, to be here and to accept this important position and uh, at the university that I respect very much because I know the history of the Kyunghee University. I would say a passion for peace mm -hmm. by its founder, uh, Yang uh, uh, Sik Cho, who established this university uh, in, in a time when uh, still uh, there were a lot of scarves uh, from, the, uh, from the war, the mm -hmm. Korean Wars. Uh, and then all through the years, uh, it was uh, very linked to UNESCO. I hope I can contribute something to this continued, um, I would say, search for peace uh, and for a better understanding uh, among people. Mm -hmm. But uh, let me just say, it's not the first time uh, I'm coming to Korea. Yes. In, in my position as Director General, I have been many times uh, in your wonderful country. Uh, and if I took this and I accept it uh, with pleasure, uh, this invitation, uh, on behalf of uh, Kyunghee University, it was uh, indeed uh, uh, as a respect to Korea and to the support uh, that uh, uh, Korea has given to UNESCO. Mm -hmm. So there's always a first for everyone. Um, do you remember your first visit to Korea and how that impression has changed throughout the years? I, I do remember very vividly. It was in 2010. I came here for the very important conference on arts education. Yes. This is the incredible story of, uh, of, of development, of achieving um, excellence in education, in science and technology, uh, becoming from a uh, poor country into the, I would say, cutting edge um, technological development country, competitive country. Mm -hmm. But when I say fascinating, I think what is very true for the, for the Korean people, it is that now Korea is giving back uh, to the uh, developing world with its example and um, sharing its experience. You do not give up your identity. Mm. You do not forget about your history. On the contrary, yes. you are very proud. You continue to protect, preserve it. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time, you jump into modernity. So this reconciliation, uh, 
uh, with the heritage, with history, uh, and with modern development is a challenge for many countries. And I think Korean has, uh, Koreans, you Koreans have found this um, balance between uh, your identity, heritage, and modernity. And it's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. So now back to um, Professor Irina Borkova. I'd like to ask you, what exactly prompted you to teach at a university in Korea? I think what, what really um, uh, linked me very strongly is the way education has been uh, embraced uh, in Korea mm. in order to transform the society, to change it. Um, and I think Korea is the leader uh, into this new search for what actually uh, education can bring uh, to the people. And also because I know that Kyunghae University mm -hmm. is embracing, uh, again, this concept of uh, global citizenship yes. education, notion about values, the notion about ethics, the notion about human rights mm -hmm. uh, education, the notion about uh, what I call cultural literacy, knowing about the others. Uh, uh, in, uh, in one word, uh, and, and I take it from uh, just a, a debate we had uh, two days ago in yes. Kyunghae University, uh -huh. uh, it is about embracing the common values uh, of, of human rights, of mm -hmm. some common values of uh, humanity, but also giving it a local perspective. I think this is very important. Mm -hmm. After eight years at the helm of UNESCO as its director general, I'm more than ever convinced in the relevance of its constitution that opens with these remarkable words. Since wars start in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed. I'm more than ever convinced in the need for new humanism to guide the world in the 21st century, the platform on which I was elected in 2009 and which I pursued during my two mandates. I have talked to leaders, intellectuals, university professors, teachers and scientists, front runners from the private sector and civil society groups. I'm more than ever convinced that in an age of interconnectedness and globalization, we need to give it a human face. I'm more than ever convinced that we are all one humanity, that share one common planet, common aspirations and common challenges that know no political and geographical borders. In 2009, this was when you became the first woman to head UNESCO, and you served two consecutive four-year terms as Director General of UNESCO, which ended last November. So I'd like, you, like to ask you, as you reached the end of your term, did you feel a sense of, um, I guess, relief or a sense of sadness, should I say? Did you have any regrets toward the end? Definitely not relief. Uh -huh. um, Definitely not sadness mm -hmm. uh, from uh, that point of view. I think uh, rather kind of a sense of duty and a sense of responsibility still. Uh, I think they were fascinating eight years, uh, probably the most interesting years in my, in my life, in my both uh, professional career and I would say in my personal life. During these eight years, we saw conflict. Mm -hmm. We saw a very tragic destruction of world heritage uh, in Syria, in Iraq, in Mali, in some other parts of the world. And my sense of responsibility was how to ring the bell, how to sensitize the leaders of the world, political leaders, uh, that it is not just destruction of bricks and stones, mm -hmm. but they're attacking uh, our diversity. Yes. They were attacking uh, identities of the people. Mm -hmm. And I would say that um, thinking back, and I was thinking a lot about these eight years, uh, uh, about what I did, what I could have done more, mm -hmm. what, uh, what I uh, could be proud of. I think the adoption of several Security Council resolutions, yes. uh, the last one was adopted uh, uh, almost precisely a year ago, 
uh, about the importance of heritage, protection mm -hmm. of world heritage, was an extremely important, uh, I would say, political decision of the United Nations, where uh, finally the uh, Security Council put the dots together between the cultural, the humanitarian, mm -hmm. and the political, uh, I would say, uh, uh, security aspect of protection of heritage. So, um, could I have done more? Well, always you can do more. Yes. Always, um, you know, you think if you have you know, second thoughts, mm -hmm. why didn't? But I think uh, I, I left UNESCO with the sense of uh, mission accomplished. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, of course, um, uh, I always say that uh, UNESCO has such a wonderful mandate. It's a beautiful mandate um, that UNESCO is a little bit like a virus. You, you get <laughs> into you and uh, you just uh, uh, cannot, uh, you know, get away with it. Uh, uh -huh. And I know that um, uh, all the people who went through my predecessors, I'm um, a very good friend with the former director generals of the mm -hmm. UNESCO. I support the, my successor, uh, Madame Azoulay. I, uh, um, I have told her that she can count always on my experience and uh, whenever she needs. I think it is very important to continue promoting this important agenda. Today, the world meets in Incheon, Republic of Korea, to renew this vision and chart a new course. Now, you have achieved much during your term as Director General, and I'd like to ask you if um, there is a particularly memorable feat that you've achieved, um, something that you'd like to tell us about. You know, I, I try to make UNESCO relevant mm -hmm. to uh, what happens in the world and not to be kind of an ivory tower and live there with just one well, wonderful concept mm -hmm. that we have. but. To make it relevant to what is happening uh, today, I did mention the destruction of heritage. Yes. Uh, I remember uh, when the in Mali, town of Timbuktu, where we know uh, it's so much linked to the history of, of Islam, of Africa, where uh, there are more than uh, maybe a million uh, manuscripts which contain the wisdom of philosophy, of medicine, of, of culture, when extremists uh, occupied uh, Timbuktu and started burning these manuscripts mm. and destroyed uh, mausoleums and mosques. The French president at that time, uh, François Hollande, uh, invited me two years later when the French troops and the African troops uh, pushed away uh, the, the extremists. Uh, and we went and I saw, I was mm. devastated when I saw these burnt manuscripts and destroyed uh, mausoleums and I promised to rebuild them. The news are alarming. Uh, I appealed yesterday to uh, uh, all parties concerned to protect uh, uh, Palmyra and to leave it outside uh, the military activity. So two years later, yes. I went and we, we rebuilt with the local people, with the local materials. Mm -hmm. And I met with the local people, communities who were literally uh, crying. Oh, yeah. And uh, I had the feeling that I'm giving back them mm -hmm. their identity. Or I remember when I launched the social network campaign, I went twice to Baghdad mm -hmm. after more than half of the territory of Iraq was occupied. We brainstormed with my colleagues, what, have, what shall we do in order to sensitize the young people, the, the world uh, leaders about it? And I went six months later to the University of Baghdad and I launched the first ever for UNESCO social network campaign, Unite for Heritage with the young Iraqi students. And now this is one of the most successful uh, campaign that we have launched and there are millions of uh, young people who every single day yeah. upload uh, images, they share their experiences, they connect with the people from other cultures mm -hmm. uh, in order to share these experiences. We are trying to change the narrative in the uh, social network uh, uh, space of white heritage matters and to bring a different sense of respect and of mutual understanding, which is so much needed uh, nowadays. So I think this is one part of uh, what I'm really proud of. Mm -hmm. And probably the second one is that I, I worked a lot for uh, being, of course, the first um, woman director general of UNESCO yes. 
to bring about a different uh, thinking about uh, gender equality, empowering of women, uh, launching uh, many initiatives about girls' education mm -hmm. in many settings where girls uh, still are deprived of, of this right, yes. but also to encourage girls to pursue careers of scientists, mm -hmm. of uh, uh, mathematicians, of engineers, launching uh, such programs. Uh, uh, and then uh, also to uh, um, encourage uh, uh, and to work with men, because I think gender equality is not, uh, and feminism is not against men. Mm -hmm. I think it is about to uh, uh, find the best in a society, both women and men, being more inclusive, more competitive, of course, society to grow, a society to be at balance uh, mm -hmm. it itself. To put human rights and dignity first, to make sure every girl and boy gets to school, learns what they need, including new forms of global citizenship. <laughs> So I'd like to ask you about um, how during your term as Director General, I heard that Korea made an especially strong impression on you. So could you please tell us about that? Well, as I said, um, Korea has always uh, very, been very close to UNESCO. Mm -hmm. um, currently, uh, the permanent delegate, ambassador of Korea to UNESCO, Ambassador Lee actually is chairing the executive board. I think it's a very important recognition also about uh, Korean society, I would say, overall uh, commitment to the organization. And during this time, um, we developed uh, very many different uh, uh, programs and partnerships. Uh, in uh, 2015, we had here a major in Incheon, a major uh, conference uh, where we kind of wrapped up all the efforts uh, for the uh, education goal number four into the sustainable development agenda. But I did try to develop some cooperation also with the Korean private companies. Mm -hmm. I want to mention one, I would say, uh, fantastic partnership that uh, uh, I established uh, with the CJ Corporation, with the Foundation uh, for Girls' Education. Uh, the corporation made a fantastic uh, uh, cartoons about uh, why education of both girls and boys uh -huh, matters yeah. and showing it in different circumstances. So, All this, I would say, very dense um, uh, network that uh, UNESCO has in Korea mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, is a fascinating one. I was supporting uh, uh, all of these initiatives and I'm very proud that they have grown up uh, to be really an important partners now in this global quest once again. Yes for peace and sustainable development. So you've obviously um, been a very passionate advocate of education and, and cultural matters. Now, there is an increasing number of people that are emphasizing, as you've mentioned, the importance of education, especially in the age of the fourth industrial revolution. So would you like to add something? This, what you, do you know, think about I, this I think that, mm -hmm. um, and, and I know that Korean society is very receptive to this mm -hmm. because education, uh, in fact, transformed Korea and made what Korea is nowadays. I think, and I know that there is a very also passionate debate about education here uh, in Korea. Education is the foundation of human development. Nowadays, we speak not just about education, we speak about learning. Yes. And without education nowadays, uh, the world cannot go, any society, uh, any economy into the fourth industrial revolution mm -hmm. because the economy changes. We see that uh, with the artificial intelligence, so with new technologies, mm -hmm. uh, uh, there are jobs that have been lost. Yes. There are new jobs that are coming. Mm -hmm. With the greening, as we say, of the economy, also there are new green jobs that uh, uh, are being created. Other traditional jobs mm -hmm. are being uh, uh, also uh, fading away. So what is needed nowadays, we need three things. Mm -hmm. It's reskilling, reskilling, and reskilling. Re <laughs> so, and this is where also education and skills comes uh, into the picture. Yeah. So, how to make an education system and learning adequate to this is mm -hmm. a big question mm. nowadays. We have launched um, 
three, two years ago, actually, into the preparation to the run-up uh, to the adoption of the Agenda for Sustainable Development of the United Nations 2030, uh, a very important uh, rethinking education report. Mm -hmm. We were trying to look uh, at to the traditional, um, I would say, understanding about uh, what education is, to introduce entirely new uh, elements. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is, uh, should be the basis of a debate in, I think, any um, education um, debate you have in any society. Yes, I mean, there is so much to education. It's, um, and, and as you've mentioned, Education will never disappear. It'll just take up different forms. Right. Yes. Now, as you are from Eastern Europe uh, and you've personally experienced the Cold uh, War era, I feel that you might have some thoughts on the growing cordial sentiments, uh, shall I say, between the two Koreas. Uh, what is your opinion on this matter? You know, um, I really, I, I'm um, from, from, from Eastern Europe, from Europe, and I, uh, I'm from this generation of uh, uh, Europeans on both ends of East and West, they, uh, we had the historic chance of uh, the reunification of Europe. It happens once in a generation or it doesn't happen at all. So uh, I was uh, very happy to be the first um, secretary of the uh, government uh, at that time uh, to work for the uh, uh, integration of Bulgaria, for the membership of Bulgaria into the European Union. And uh, I know how, how complex, how difficult uh, these processes are. But we did it. We did it yes. uh, uh, 28 years ago. And uh, Korean Peninsula is the only, I would say, vestige of the Cold War. From that point of view, any single step that can bring uh, uh, peace, that can, could bring us closer, mm -hmm. I would say, to the peace, to, uh, 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 to having uh, more trust uh, uh, here in the region that mm -hmm. would uh, eliminate nuclear weapons, uh, the threats, uh, or the, that could open uh, the, uh, to Korea's, uh, and I would say, uh, the region and wider uh, uh, to, uh, to the world, is, I, I think is more than welcomed. Uh, my own experience is that what can bring uh, more lasting, uh, uh, I would say, environment mm -hmm. conducive to peace and building trust is openness. openness. Uh, to open uh, between universities, uh, between intellectuals, um, uh, between uh, uh, different uh, civil society groups. Uh, I think openness engagement brings uh, can bring this trust uh, that can finally uh, mm -hmm. lead to some more important political uh, processes. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's, it's a process. It's not easy, I know. Uh, it takes time, but it's worth working for that. Yes. Time flew by very quickly and we're down to our final question. Um, I'd like to ask you about your future plans. Well, you know, when I was stepping down, there were a lot of questions, a lot of people, what, what next? Yes. Um, the easy answer uh -huh. uh, at uh, the end of my mandate, uh, end of the year, when I received the invitation from Kyunghee University yes. was to say, yes, you know, I received this and mm -hmm. uh, I'm spending uh, time uh, also at Kyunghee University. I want to support causes. I think uh, UNESCO in my previous experience um, a professional experience has learned me a lesson to me that uh, there are so many important causes in this world and, uh, and they need support. I have experience and I think uh, I could give back also um, to, uh, uh, to many communities and circumstances what I have learned. Mm -hmm. um, these are the causes of, um, of education, uh, these are the causes of uh, intercultural dialogue, um, these are the causes of protection of heritage and how we should describe this heritage into local uh, contexts. Um, these are uh, also the um, uh, causes uh, about gender equality. I will uh, not stop to uh, uh, speak about that. I will not stop to give my perspective, my experience, and also to convince um, uh, both uh, men and women and different uh, political leaders um, why it is important because I deeply believe that mm -hmm. uh, it is, I think, the unfinished business of uh, the 20th century or the others, I think we are in the 21st century. So 
these are many causes that I will continue to uh, promote, uh, uh, to support and to fight for. Yes. Uh, you have accumulated years and years of experience and insights in the uh, fields of politics and diplomacy throughout the years. And uh, I hope that you continue to pass on that valuable knowledge to the next generation. I'd like to thank you so much for joining us today on Heart to Heart. And uh, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff, and thank you to all the viewers for this opportunity. Thank you. Mm -hmm.